Britain, America, Japan, Korea, and most recently China, their fastest economic growth periods all occurred in industrial eras driven by manufacturing. India's high economic growth period, which has started in the 90s but is really starting to gather pace and is likely to be at its peak in the coming decades, is happening in the digital age. India's most significant foreign export so far has been information technology and the impact of technology on India's re-emergence is likely to only increase. Digital technology is changing the world and India is no exception. Uh, India is also right at the heart of this change, both in terms of the contribution that Indians in the US and elsewhere, as well as in India, are making on the industry and on the technologies, but also in the way that India is solving so many of its developmental challenges, including governance, healthcare, retail, education and employment, by using digital technology. Whilst there isn't consensus yet on what exactly to call the age in which we are living in, it is widely agreed that we've shifted gears in the last few decades. And there is a profound sense that things are changing faster now than they ever have before. People have called this the technological age, the information age, the computer age. Um, there are also those who believe we are undergoing a fourth industrial revolution or entering a second machine age. So why did I choose digital age? Well, it's because I feel that this phrase relates best to the Indian context. First of all, I can't help resist uh, pointing out to you that the Indians invented zero, uh, which uh, is the fundamental discovery required in order to have a digital world of ones and zeros. Um, we'll talk more about that next week when we look at how Indian mathematics came to be universally adopted uh, and almost the, the only language which uh, the whole of mankind uses. Uh, it's an amusing coincidence um, that India's IT industry uh, first got its major opportunity to prove its potential uh, when the world was facing the Y2K problem, the millennium bug. This happened because computers, using the ancient invention of the place value decimal system, um, when the computers got to New Year's Day 2000, uh, the date would roll over from 99 to 00. zero. So you wouldn't have had this issue uh, if we'd used Roman numerals instead of Indian ones. Uh, but then again, we probably wouldn't have had computers in the digital age if we were still using Roman numerals either. I want to now tell you a story which comes from India uh, and has been used by the likes of Ray Kurzweil and more recently by Eric Brynjolfsson and Andrew McAfee as an analogy for explaining exponential growth. A long time ago, a long, long time ago, a wise old Indian invented the game we now call chess. And he showed this great game to his Maharaja, his king. And the king was so impressed uh, that he offered the man whatever he wanted in return for this great gift, this invention of his. So the man said, give me one grain of rice on the first square of the chessboard and double it for each of the subsequent 63 squares. The king said, fine, and thought the wise man was actually perhaps a bit of a fool. Um, he could see that when he put the, grace on, uh, the, the grains of rice on the board that um, he could easily afford to, to pay this. But the numbers rapidly become increasingly incomprehensible. The piles of rice are doubling and doubling and doubling. And when you get to the final square, 64 square, you'd need a pile of rice the size of Mount Everest in order to be able to repay the wise man. So the Maharaja would have been long bankrupted by the time he got to uh, the uh, end of the chessboard. Now, many believe in terms of technological improvements that we are now entering the equivalent of the second half of the chessboard. That's when the numbers start to get really, really dramatic. Moore's law, which we all know, the prediction that computing power would double every 18 months, has dramatically transformed so many aspects of our lives. After 32 or so doublings of computational capacity or price performance, memory, since the 1960s, our technological capabilities are starting to get increasingly impressive. IBM's Deep Blue beat Kasparov at chess in 1997. IBM's Watson won Jeopardy in 2011. 
and most recently Google's DeepMind managed to, uh, its AlphaGo program, managed to beat Lee Sedol uh, in 2016. Computer power that was once available only to the world's top scientists and took up entire buildings is now cheaply available and can fit in one's pocket. Thanks to cloud services, almost anyone can share in some of the best technology in the world, whereas before it would have only been possible and, and available to a select few. We've really entered a world of big data and the internet of things is only increasing that data. So the amount of available data and its sources is growing exponentially, like the grains of rice on the chessboard. And that's promising to reshape business and society, enabling people to work hand in hand with artificial intelligence and other software solutions. Change is happening very quickly and it's hard to predict things. Some people describe this as a VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. There have been a number of warnings about the implications of this exponential technological change. People are increasingly concerned what jobs humans will have left if they are displaced by machines. The future of jobs was even the theme of this year, 2016's World Economic Forum. Software is eating the world, says Mark Andreessen. Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking believe artificial intelligence might be the greatest existential threat to humanity. But let me finish this unit with a hopeful message. Going back to the world of chess. Gary Kasparov, uh, a few years ago, um, reported that the best game is now being played not by the most sophisticated computer uh, or the most talented individual, but by groups of people working with software. Now this concept is the secret, the real secret to the success of India's IT industry. And why I think India will continue to reinvent itself and remain relevant even as technology evolves. A great example of this is a billion dollar unicorn startup, Mu Sigma, which is based in America in Chicago and Bangalore in India. And they work in exactly this way. They have thousands of bright young, what they call decision scientists, using software and data to help Fortune 500 companies improve the way that they do business. As a result, their workforce of young Indians and Americans is inventing a whole new industry. Perhaps the Harvard Business Review was right when they called data science the sexiest job of the 21st century.